Hey guys, okay, let's now take a look at that second part of our respiratory uh, chapter here. So still looking at chapter 22. Um, so here we're looking at part two. So we want to take a look here at the steps in respiration. I've really kind of cut this up a little bit because it gets into a little bit more detail than I want you guys to really worry about. Um, we will discuss real briefly Boyle's Law. And the only thing, there's real kind of a short and sweet thing I want you guys to be familiar with with that, um, which is just uh, just kind of talks about the relationship to pressure and volume. And I'll, and I'll explain this. Um, we'll explain how respiratory muscles will affect thoracic volume, and that goes along with that. Um, and then I think we kind of, I think this is part that I skipped through, the three conditions that make the alveoli well suited for exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. I can't remember what all I took out of this, but I know I just said, well, they're okay with this. Um, we will get into lung capacities and volumes, and that's pretty much it. We really don't get into the voluntary and involuntary control of breathing. We've discussed a little bit about uh, what controls our breathing. We talked about in the nervous system how our medulla oblongata is very much in control of our ventilation uh, because it's constantly, there are neurons that are constantly firing to our lungs telling us to involuntarily take in um, air, but we also have voluntary controls where we may choose to take a deep breath, you know, because that's something I'm, I'm choosing to do. So there are different ways that we control breathing. Obviously, in a state of stress and fear, there's going to be, you know, more involuntary control. Epinephrine is involved when we're, you know, trying, you know, to, uh, you know, when we're in that fight or flight stage, you know, so there's all kinds of different things there, but I don't get into that, so you don't need to worry about it. Um, but I do want to talk about ventilation. So ventilation itself, you know, is the process of breathing in and air, breathing in air, breathing out air as well. So taking in uh, air in and out. So inhalation, or what's also known as inspiration, is obviously the breathing in of air, whereas exhalation, also known as expiration, is then the breathing out of air. Uh, one respiratory cycle is, can, is the uh, two of those. One inhalation and one exhalation is considered one respiratory cycle. Um, so the exchange of O2 and CO2 will take place at two levels. We have at the lungs where we breathe in that air and again at the alveoli and the blood. You know, again, oxygen and carbon dioxide will be exchanged right there at the alveolus. And then again, I mentioned that then that oxygen is taken from the lungs to be pumped through the heart and then to the rest of the tissues. And it's at the tissue level that say, you know, my blood is going to my kidney, the kidney needs oxygen, it's gonna exchange at that point or at the liver or at my, you know, any muscle um, that needs oxygen at the time. So there's, you know, again, exchanges at two, two levels. Um, and then we know that oxygen and carbon dioxide is transported through our system by the blood as we talked about in our blood chapter. So ventilation, as I already mentioned, is inhalation and exhalation. One inhalation and one exhalation is considered one respiratory cycle. So really that is step one in the process of ventilation. Um, the reason why we, we take in air and we breathe out air, we talked about why our lungs expand and contract. But here, this section is talking about why air rushes into our lungs and why it rushes out of our lungs. Um, and it's because of volume and pressure changes. Um, as volume changes, pressure changes. Um, they use an analogy in your book. There's a picture of a, uh, two tire tubes at the bottom of page 415. And it's, they're both deflated. There's a bicycle tube and then there is a large truck tire tube. They're both deflated. So it talks about um, the volume that's inside each of these. Obviously the truck tire, you know, is bigger, um, but they're both deflated. It, the PowerPoint here is describing the, this analogy and it's saying if you add one liter of air to each tube, then the small tube pressure is greater than the large tube pressure because again we've only added this we've added the same amount of volume to each of these but because the size of that you know bike tire the pressure is a lot greater now um, so this analogy is explaining Boyle's law and it's explaining the um, inverse relationship of 
pressure and volume. That as what happens is volume increases, pressure decreases. As volume decreases, pressure will increase. And that's what Boyle's law means, that they are, that pressure and volume are inversely related. So taking that into account with our lungs then, so our respiratory muscles will contract to increase that thoracic volume. That's what they do. Is they, that's what we're feeling when we're breathing in air is the contraction of our, our respiratory muscles. So what happens is the volume inside of our lungs, it fills up as it increases our intrathoracic pressure. So what we identified as P2 in pictures earlier when we were talking about the expansion and contraction, that pressure actually decreases. And because there is less pressure in the lungs, that's why air rushes in. We, we don't think about that because we know that in inhalation, when I'm breathing air in, we know air rushes in because we're, we're taking that in. And, but that is the reason why it does that is because pressure um, wants to be balanced. And so pressure outside, it recognizes that because the volume is increasing, pressure is decreased, so it's gonna run, it's gonna want to rush to where there's less pressure. And then the opposite happens in an exhalation. That in an exhalation, the respiratory muscles will relax to therefore decrease that thoracic pressure. I mean, sorry, decrease the thoracic volume. So when it's relaxing, the volume there is um, is, is decreasing. So because of that, that's going to force the pressure to change. It causes the pressure inside the thorax to be higher. So therefore air rushes out to balance it out. So what's happening is constantly, you know, my, it's like it's trying to constantly balance out that pressure and it's going towards, pressure is always going to go towards um, the area where, it, where there's less pressure. And so in the event of an inhalation, that less pressure is in the lungs, so air rushes in. In the event that we're exhaling, there's less pressure outside the lungs, so that's why air rushes out. And it's constantly going back and forth. So the only purpose I wanted to you know, explain with that is just know that that's what Boyle's Law is, is the explanation of an inhalation and an exhalation is to know that pressure and volume are inversely related, which means that they are opposite of one another. As one increases, the other decreases and vice versa. So I want you, that's the only thing I really want you guys to be familiar with that. And that's the reason why those two events take place. Um, we do have a diaphragm that helps with this. The diaphragm is the muscle that's positioned again underneath the lungs that is innerva innervated by specific nerve controls. You don't need to be familiar with that as well as the intercostal muscles. The intercostal muscles are the muscles between our ribs. Um, you know, again, it's just talking about how those are controlled and we're not going to get into that. Um, all of our respiratory muscles are considered skeletal muscles. Um, uh, but, you know, again, the only thing to just be familiar with this is these are muscles that are very much involved in the process of breathing. That's the only thing I want you guys to know with these. You do not need to know the control of the certain nerves. Um, so step two in a, you know, again, in ventilation is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So why lungs are good as gas exchangers is because there is a very large surface area. So that's important because we can get more air and more oxygen into our lungs. Um, but also because our, the alveoli are very thin walled. Remember we talked about that in the first video of our respiratory system here. We were talking about how the, each alveolus is very thin, very similar to a capillary, which is also very thin. Um, so because of that, oxygen and carbon dioxide can be transported amongst these two um, things so that again, you know, we can get the oxygen and the carbon dioxide to where they need to go. So the thin alveolar and pulmonary capillary walls uh, also makes it, again, a good gas exchanger, um, as well as the closeness. So of the proximity, the closeness and proximity of the alveoli to those pulmonary capillaries is obviously very, very important as well. Um, and then again, before getting too deep into chemistry, you know, again, how pressure works and what's happening here. Um, partial pressure is, is being shown here that oxygen moves into blood from the alveoli, right? And carbon dioxide moves from the alveoli to the blood. That's what happens within the lungs. So remember we said that ventilation, or I'm sorry, that the exchange of gases takes place on two different levels, at the alveolar level, in, inside the lungs, but also at the tissue level. And again, in each alveolus, we're seeing 
oxygen is being picked up by the blood and carbon dioxide is being dropped off so that it can be exhaled. And then the reverse at the cells. In the cells of my thigh, say for instance, you know, I'm taking oxygen to my thigh, blood will take that oxygen to there, drop off the oxygen, but also pick up carbon dioxide. So the, the inverse is happening here. So oxygen moves from the blood to the tissue and carbon dioxide moves from that tissue to the blood because we need to take that carbon dioxide back up to the lungs um, to be exhaled. So what it means by partial pressure. Um, so the amount of each gas is expressed as partial pressure. So very similar to kind of what we talked about, what's, you know, how air rushes in and out of the lungs, that there is a recognition of the fact that there is less oxygen in the blood. So therefore, oxygen will be dropped off to the blood because it always wants to go to where there's less of it, where there's a less concentration. So that's what's happening here. So partial pressure of oxygen and partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Um, it does mention that oxygen is almost all transported as oxyhemoglobin, again, because it's always picked up by our red blood cells. And again, red blood cells, the hemoglobin that is currently carrying um, oxygen is referred to as oxyhemoglobin. Um, and with carbon dioxide, it's transferred a little bit differently. I'm not going to ask you any of that, so you guys can skip that. In fact, I'll remove this from the PowerPoint uh, before I, I, I go ahead and attach it. So if you guys see this on your you know, lecture here, don't worry about it. Um, I just want you guys to know that that's why, very similar to why air rushes in and out of our lungs, is very similar to why oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged and why oxygen chooses to move into the blood is again because of that partial pressure. Um, and in fact, I wonder if that picture shows kind of, it just shows, you know, again, the exchange is taking place, um, you know, here at the tissue level and then at the lungs. Uh, and it's showing that again, that that oxygen will rush, it shows specific numbers here, but it shows that oxygen rushes into the, into the capillaries and carbon dioxide rushes into the alveoli, and then we take that to the heart where it's pumped through, and then here at the tissue level, again, because pressure inside the tissue of oxygen is less than what it is in the, in the blood, oxygen will rush to the tissues because it's needed at that time. Uh, and then the same thing for the opposite. So again, because carbon dioxide levels are low in blood, carbon dioxide will go out of the tissue and into the blood. And that's what I mean by that, that again, it's going, it's according to that partial pressure. And it's just recognizing that, okay, that needs more oxygen right now. So I'm going to go to where there's a need for me, if that makes sense. Uh, and that's what that, you know, why that happens. So that's explaining the partial pressure. Oh, and that's the step three. Um, so there are tests that can be run um, in order to test the functioning of um, lung capacity. Um, there are volume tests, and so what you're seeing here and what you're seeing in this diagram, which I know is also in your text, hold on, on page 421. Um, this is showing, this is oftentimes what people have to experience if they are testing for, um, you know, if they have to take any type of breathing test, people with asthma or some type of, you know, uh, disorder sometimes have to do breathing tests. Um, so your tidal volume is normal breathing. So you're able to just breathe into a tube and that's what you're seeing on a normal breathing level. So it's normal, just quiet breathing. Your inspiratory reserve is then you take a normal breath and then you, you know, where you breathe in normally, we know that's inspiration here. Um, but then you breathe in as much as you possibly can, and that is your measure of your inspiratory reserve. So meaning, you know, we have so much there that when we're breathing normally, but then if we have to breathe in, you know, as much as we possibly can, that can be measured. Same thing with our expiratory reserve. So expiratory reserve, when we are breathing out normally, but then we breathe out and push out as much air as we possibly can, that measures our expiratory reserve. Um, and it's actually these three that's going to be measured. We're going to talk about with lung capacity on the next slide. Um, but residual um, is your, there's always a certain amount of volume of air um, on reserve 
it's it's the, all four of those together is your entire lung capacity and that's what it's showing here so your vital capacity we're going to talk about on the next powerpoint capacities can be measured too is everything that's needed for normal breathing as well as your inspiratory and expiratory reserve so just again what's needed in the process of extra inhale and extra exhale um, that is your entire vital capacity but it doesn't equate to the total lung capacity because that's your residual volume that's just what's left you do have you know again a certain amount that's left over for again for residual whereas your lung capacity so again your vital capacity is the maximum exhalation following maximum inhalation um, your functional Residual capacity is then what I just talked about with that residual. And total lung capacity would be the two of those together. So that's what that is. Um, so just in you know being familiar with what those are, knowing that tidal volume is measuring of normal breathing, inspiratory reserve is upon a deep inhalation, expiratory reserve is a deep exhalation, is residual is what le is left over. So all four of those is your total lung capacity. Vital capacity just includes those first three, um, where it's the addition of the residual that is your total lung capacity. And like I said, that's, those are tests that can oftentimes be run to see and make sure that your lung, your lungs are performing as they should. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. That's the end of chapter 22. Uh, in that chapter, again, really focus on that uh, anatomy of the respiratory tract, um, but definitely be familiar with some of those things that we discussed without having to, again, get too deep into the chemistry part of it and not having to really worry too much about the exact definition of Boyle's Law and things like that. Don't worry about that. Um, the main reason that I explain those is to just kind of get a basic understanding of why air goes into our lungs and then out of our lungs and why oxygen chooses to go out of our alveoli and into the blood and why oxygen chooses to go out of the blood and into the tissues. So that's, that's why that was covered. All right, guys. So if you guys have any questions at all, please just let me know.